macro photography is important for many reasons. It can really help us marvel at things that are all around. The little critters, the eyeballs of dragonflies, the wings of butterflies. We get to see things that we can't see with our own eyes and start appreciating nature that could be in our backyards and in our local parks. So it's a way not only to celebrate, but it's a way to explore and to connect with things that we might not otherwise see and appreciate. We are in the rewilding area at Lucinda Verde in Bolivia, and we are here looking at all the different pollinators they have, from the native bee species to the butterflies. We're not gonna see the bats, it's the wrong time of day for that, but they are here as well. <laughs> There's a lot of pollinators here, but we're gonna focus on the macro. We're gonna focus on showing you the world of native stingless bees. It is so easy to fall in love with bears and jaguars and all the big animals around the planet. But bees, which are vital to pollination, which are vital to native forests, which is vital to our food, it's harder to see these things, which is why macro photography is so important because we can bring people into this world of native bees and get people to love them more and appreciate how amazing they actually are. I've been coming to Lucinda Verde for over a decade. I came about a year and a half ago because of bears. They had just rescued two baby bears from animal trafficking. The more I came here, sometimes finding stories is about opening your eyes and looking around. While the bears were such a beautiful and crazy story, there was another story that caught my attention. People kept talking about honey and they kept talking about bees. And I'm like, what are they talking about? Why are these so important? Areas like the Amazon are under a massive threat from deforestation, from logging and mining companies. Protecting the native bees helps protect the native plants. It helps restore the earth that has been destroyed. It helps rewild the area. People started talking about how they were going to all these indigenous communities to teach all these different people how to protect and how to harvest the honey from native bees, which not only helps them, but it helps the Amazon. So I started to look into this story going, wow, this is a really cool story. Now, how can I use my photography to connect people to native bees and show people how important, how vital, and how cool they actually are? <laughs> so we are here and I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks on how to photograph bees. When I started taking photos of the bees, first thing I did, I pulled out my macro lenses to get all that detail, to be able to see all the information in the bees. And I was photographing them in their hives, which was a great way to pull out my macro lens and start exploring the world of bees. But then I started to want to get them in flight. And when I got them in flight, they are so fast and so quick that I did have to pull out my flashes. So I pulled out my flash, <laughs> synced it with my camera, and I started photographing the bees in flight. Then I wanted to take it to another level. So I wanted to put my flash on rear sync, which what that does is it throws a burst of light out at the very end of the exposure. So I can leave my camera open for longer. I wanted to do this because I wanted to show the movement. I wanted to show the behavior. So having a little touch of a backlight and then using rear sync, I'm able to show the path of the bees. One of the biggest challenges here, these bees are tiny. And when I say tiny, they're tiny, tiny. It's not like a normal honeybee. It's like the size of a wing of a honeybee. <laughs> not only are they tiny, they're in flight, they're erratic, and they're kind of hard to predict exactly what's going on. So there's a lot of challenges. This took me a long time to figure out, but I'm really excited to share with you all how I made these shots. One note here, anyone that's photographing with flash, make sure you check with an expert that that flash is not going to bother whatever you're photographing. Nocturnal insects, a flash might be super disruptive to their vision forever, for their way of seeing, for their way of finding food. So make sure everything you do, you consult with somebody that is an expert in that species. And that's one of the reasons we have Rupa here. He is a bee biologist and he has been helping me all along the way to make sure that I'm not harming a single bee in these photos.
The gear I'm using today, the Nikon Z8, the Nikon Z9, I've got my 105 macro, I've got my 50 macro, I also have my SB5000 and my SB910, those are my speed lights that I'm using to get the bees in flight. I also have a WR11A, which is my little trigger that I use to trigger those flashes off camera. And I have a Godex light stick <laughs> that I'm using for my backlight. We are here with the Senoritas, one of the most common native bee species in South America. I got the bee biologist Rupa to help me figure out how I could put a black cloth up here so that I don't interfere with these bees path in and out to get their pollen because that's very essential and I don't want to make anything harder for them. Now I've set up a Godox backlight here and why I'm putting this up, let me talk about why I'm putting this up. There's a little bit too much light to have the flash be the dominant light source. So I needed to block some of that light and I wanna be able to do this rear sink. I'm basically making a little bit of a studio setup. I've got an SB910, and this is set up to respond to the light of the SB5000. So once it sees the flash here, the light, it'll trigger. I put this flash just on 1 16th of a second. I want my flash power to be really on the lower side. I don't want full light from that flash because I want a faster flash duration. I want that flash to go off for a very short period of time in order to stop the bees in flight. So photographing these bees, I'm trying to take it to a different level. Instead of just taking pictures of bees in the air, um, I want to show the path. I want to show the fact that there's different types of bees. You've got bees that are guarding, you've got bees that are gathering. So I'm using rear camera sync. I've got my Z9, I've got my 105 macro, I've got a WR11A triggering my Nikon 5000 flash right here. I've got a little bit of a static light in the background to Godox. One of the things that I failed at a lot with this is with bees, they're flying, their wings are going so fast that when I came out here for the first time, I was shooting at full power and I was getting a lot of fuzzy shots of bees, but different flashes have different flash durations. And the more you cut that power of the flash, the faster your flash duration is. So I've cut the power of my flash to one eighth of a second. I worked with a bee biologist here, Rupa, to put up this black cloth. And we did that in a way that does not obstruct the bees going in and out of the hive. We want it to be able to see the light so that the bees can go find their honey and they do what they need to do. But I needed to cut the light to be able to use the flash at one eighth of a power as my primary light source. So I'm going to go ahead at it. I'm going to keep an eye. I'm really surprised the autofocus is actually working. I'm used to using focus peaking and just waiting for something to fly at the right spot. But I think with the latest firmware update, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. <laughs> so my Z9 is catching these bees in air and I am going to be shooting away, trying to get that path, which is what I'm using this rear Godox light for. And then this front light is going to do that rear curtain sink and it's going to stop the action in the middle of the pack. That's exactly what I'm looking for right there. Did I get it? <gasps> yes, I did. Look at it, it's got a sideways flight. As a conservation photographer, you never know where your stories are gonna go. And that's the whole thing. Being a photojournalist, I'm a journalist. I find stories that I'm passionate about and I follow them. And a lot of times those stories don't tend to go into those big publications or anything like that. But you know what makes me feel great is when Rupa has one of my photos out in his lecture and he's using that in these indigenous communities to teach people and to show people and actually help spread knowledge and passion and understanding because that in a lot of ways is what's moving us steps forward to help protect the planet. So if you get discouraged because it is hard to get published these days, if you help give your photos for education, for different purposes, you can really help change lives and help better the planet. I believe so strongly in the power of photography to make change. Being able to not just celebrate species like native bees and show people how they can help protect and preserve them, which is gonna help our planet, but also to celebrate those heroes and celebrate people that are fighting for wildlife. People like Rupa that are going out to all these indigenous communities to teach them about native bees because that helps not just the earth, 
but it also helps the people. This story is something that I truly believe in, and I believe that photography can bring that world to other people. Through photos, I've shown Rupa behaviors he didn't even know existed. We've been photographing bees that don't even have names. Having that sort of documentation is important for preservation of biodiversity, but it's also important for helping communities and helping people out. And maybe it'll inspire some of you all to help protect your native bees. Or plant some plants that pollinators love in your garden. Tons of little things that we can all do. Either way, know that your photography can make a difference. So here we are, about to leave Lacenda Verde. We've been telling the story of the animals, and now we're gonna move into the Amazon and talk about the story of protecting the planet and protecting the land by protecting the pollinators. We're gonna go very small, but yet very big. Can't wait to see all of you in the Bolivian Amazon.